हेलो हेलो हाय सो टुडे विल टॉक अबाउट द क्वार्टनरी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन एंड द कोऑपरेटिव बाइंडिंग ऑफ हीमोग्लोबिन ओके एंड दैट्स क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द हील इक्वेशन हील कोएफिशिएंट एंड हाउ द ऑक्सीजन डिसोसिएशन कार ओके एंड व्हाट इज द रिस्पांसिबल फैक्टर टू डिफरेंट मॉडल ओके सो इन आवर देयर आर फोर डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चर प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी देन टर्सियरी देन क्वार्टनरी राइट in primary structure we talk about peptide bond and uh, some uh, random amino acid sequence in secondary structure we talked about uh, alpha helix beta plated sheet and uh, some collagen something right some tarn loop so random coil in tertiary structure we talk about protein folding and uh, disulfide bond formation different enzyme pdi ppi chaperon that are responsible for protein folding in quaternary structure we will talk about uh, how the quaternary structure is actually uh, achieved and what's the role of the quaternary structure why we need quaternary structure of a particular protein okay and that's so we can say the different kind of interaction responsible for quaternary structure and uh, in terms of that we will see the hemoglobin and myoglobin structure myoglobin is a monomer and the hemoglobin structure is quaternary structure it has four identical uh, not identical four subunit okay two alpha subunit and two beta subunit so hemoglobin and myoglobin both are transport protein they actually carry oxygen and to hemoglobin carry oxygen to different uh, parts of body okay and myoglobin mainly to the muscle so we will see one comparative study between hemoglobin and myoglobin hemoglobin there is one single subunit in case sorry myoglobin is single subunit hemoglobin is uh, has four subunit right two alpha and two beta all like the myoglobin is actually made up of the active site active site is made up of uh, eight alpha helix so here it's similar but also here it's needed it's required the hydrophobic interaction hydrophobic interaction between side between subunit in case of myoglobin it uh, follows simple michaelis menten uh, kinetic equation so if i plot here this percentage of saturation and here the po2 then the curve will be simply like that hyperbolic curve so hyperbolic curve but in case of hemoglobin the curve is not hyperbolic rather the curve curve is uh, sigmoid sigmoidal curve That is PO2, and that is percentage saturation. Saturation. Right. Now uh, we have to see the heme structure and how the oxygen that bind to heme is stabilized by uh, different amino acid. So generally, heme is just inside the uh, just engraved inside the alpha helix. Okay. so we will in in a pyrrol ring it is a pyrrol ring right four pyrrol ring are attached here you have to just something random for pyrrol ring this is some beautiful structure okay and this uh, for this beautiful structure actually we are surviving that's so this is histidine 93 here oxygen is there and this oxygen is stabilized by another histidine of the hemoglobin hemoglobin means heme plus globin heme is a prosthetic group and globin is a protein that carries the oxygen right the oxygen is actually attached to the heme group and it's stabilized by histidine 64 that histidine is called distal histidine and that histidine is called proximal histidine right so the distal histidine role is to stabilize 
stabilize bound O2. Okay, now you can assume some kind of uh, helix things are there. Okay, uh, so for hemoglobin binding curve, there are two kind of things. It is called elastic regulator. So there are four subunit of hemoglobin, right? Now assume that you have four group of friends and one friend want to do uh, make some tour or something. Then he is convincing other friend and the other friend is convinced. Okay. Now they will convince one each other. Okay. That is cooperative binding. So O2 binding to hemoglobin. It's cooperative. Cooperative. Cooperative means binding to uh, first O2 bind to one subunit. Then it make it more relaxed and simultaneously all the uh, like for the other subunit also feel relaxed state and then it will also bind to oxygen okay so now suppose our it was relaxed and then it is relaxed and it is tensed condition so sorry hemoglobin has two condition one is r one is t the r is relaxed uh, state and t is tout that is the uh, 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 quite tight state you can say so in that state hemoglobin has lower o2 affinity in our state hemoglobin has higher o2 affinity okay so the main sole purpose purpose is that you need hemoglobin because the parasitic pressure of oxygen in our body is different you have to take from outside there the parasitic pressure is different you have to release the oxygen in our body the parasitic pressure is different there so in generally in relaxed state the oxygen bind to the hemoglobin and in tight state the oxygen is released from the hemoglobin okay so the hemoglobin saturation curve generally something looks like that okay that is percentage of saturation and that is po2 but this graph is some shifted sometimes what does it mean if the graph is shifted suppose the graph is shifted to that and suppose the graph is shifted to that there is one shifting called left shift that is right shift so that shift means that your hemoglobin has low affinity low affinity and this low affinity as it's allosteric it is regulated by something i will explain like this is 2 3 b p g okay 2 3 b p g and co2 and h plus is a negative allosteric regulator and here this is o2 that's quite positive allosteric regulator okay now that condition has higher affinity affinity so in higher affinity generally oxygen loading happen in lower affinity oxygen unloading that's very important thing to understand suppose in outside your uh, oxygen affinity is higher that means your hemoglobin can bind to more oxygen and i know inside your body uh, due to certain circumstances your hemoglobin will release oxygen and your body will get oxygen right what is the negative regulator 2 3 bpg co2 and h plus okay all these things uh, actually uh, just reduce the binding of hemoglobin to o2 reduce the affinity okay so in 2 3 bpg the one mo molecule of 2 3 bpg bind sorry bind to the central cavity bind to central cavity of hemoglobin this is very important people can ask you how many bpg uh, can bind to central cavity of hemoglobin that's why so suppose if you are taking more carbonated drink okay or more acidic uh, food so it's highly probable that in more acidic condition or some gastric condition uh, patients sometimes suffer due to uh, some kind of insufficiency of oxygen 
because at that time the hemoglobin is not sufficient and uh, the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen is not uh, sufficient right so that's why it's intended to some hygienic food to avoid carbonated drink okay and if you uh, climb mountain at that time you also feel suffocation so at that time what happened uh, the 2 3 bpg level is increased okay and the 2 3 bpg level as it's in increasing uh, it will reduce the oxygen affinity of hemoglobin that's sometimes called as mountain sickness okay now we know allosteric <coughs> we discussed about already discussed about the allosteric regulation here the co2 so if i say hemoglobin o2 binding there is some positive regulator there is some negative regulator in a negative regulator we will write 2 3 bpg co2 and h plus because the h plus can protonate the histidine or some other amino acid that will uh, suppress uh, the stabilization of the oxygen mainly the histidine suppose just assume the h plus has the power to disrupt the uh, bonding between the distal histidine and the oxygen then of course the affinity will be lower right and for positive regulator that is only oxygen so these are allosteric regulator allosteric regulator there are two kind of model that is proposed model one is M mwc model and another is sequential model so MWC model proposed that all the molecule, as so all the four subunit, present at a single time in the same condition. So suppose this all molecule are relaxed, all are relaxed. Simultaneously, they will be tensed. T, 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 T. And then again, it is, if some oxygen comes, one binding will en enhance every R. That means at a particular given time all the subunit are in the same con conformation but the sequential model is uh, proposing that no it's not like that one subunit is first attaching to oxygen and then it's altering the other structure so that now it uh, is relaxed and it can bind to more oxygen okay so uh, there is some equation we will see uh, how what is heal equation so the heal equation is basically the dissociation between oxygen and hemoglobin. So first we will see about the uh, equation for myoglobin. And then we can generalize uh, that equation for hemoglobin. Myoglobin O2 dissociation. Because the dissociation is important. Suppose if the binding is much more but the oxygen is not dissociating then there is no use, right? How, what you can do with more oxygen if your body is not getting oxygen and if the oxygen is not dissociating that means your body is not getting oxygen of course so generally mbo2 that will leads to mb plus o2 i am writing the it kd okay it's better if we take one new page mbo2 is dissociating kd mb plus o2 and now I can write KD as MB. MB is a free myoglobin, right? O2 and then MbO2. MbO2 means the myoglobin that's bound to oxygen. That's true. Now, for if I want to write Y, that is fraction of saturation. Fraction of saturation. What I will write? Number of binding uh, site occupied divided by total number of binding site total number of binding site the number of binding site occupied that means the myoglobin uh, oxygen Right, MbO2 that is the amount of myoglobin that is bound to oxygen and the total is the maximum like the myoglobin bound to oxygen and the free myoglobin 
right now if i write that equation the same way that here mb o2 so mb o2 divided by kd now we can write that mb o2 divided by kd and then in place of mb o2 we can write the similar thing mb o2 by kd plus mb and then what you will get mb <laughs> o2 by kd then mb o2 plus mb kd divided by kd that means mb is everywhere so the thing will be o2 divided by o2 plus kd now if uh, it is half saturated that means y is half if at that condition half means what so oxygen concentration we can't write like that we have write the partial pressure of oxygen so uh, po2 and uh, kd then the kd equals to po2 and we will mention as p50 so we can write it as po2 divided by po2 plus p50 o2 that is the saturation uh, okay from the fraction of saturation we, you can derive it for hemoglobin as well so the thing you need to know the dissociation equation okay so for hemoglobin we can write similar way because in case of myoglobin only one solvent is bind uh, binding to one oxygen but in case of hemoglobin that is binding to n number of uh, oxygen or suppose four or something so in case of hemoglobin we can write uh, p o2 n p o2 n plus p 50 n for hemoglobin right now for uh, myoglobin as we see here y equals to p o2 divided by p o2 plus p 50 that means 1 minus y it will be 1 minus p o2 divided by p o2 plus p 50 that means uh, p 50 by p o2 plus p 50 that is the 1 minus y so if you do y by 1 minus 1 that will be uh, p o2 by p 50 now if you take log of both side log y by 1 minus y is equal to log p o2 minus log p 50 this is a straightforward uh, equation mx plus c that is the straight line equation so if you take the equation like that uh, it will be n equals to 1 here and in the direction log y by 1 minus y in that direction you can write log po2 and for hemoglobin this is for myoglobin for hemoglobin also you can derive the equation at that case uh, the n here is 2.823 this n is called hill coefficient here the n is called hill coefficient so it will be 82.823 you can derive it so that's all about the oxygen saturation uh, curve and oxygen uh, you can calculate the uh, fraction okay and along with that we discussed about how hemoglobin and myoglobin bound to oxygen how it's stabilized via the histidine proximal histidine and distal histidine the proximal histidine bind with directly to the heme uh, the fe fe plus fe2 plus and the distal histidine is actually stabilizing the oxygen that is bound to the heme group okay so that's very important thing to you to understand the distal ox distal hemoglobin that is providing stable stability to bound 
O2 and the O2 bound to what? Bound to Fe2 plus. It's not to other protein or something. You should understand the O2 is binding to Fe2 plus and this O2 is stabilized by distal histidine. Okay, so that's all about the quaternary structure and these things. And one thing you should understand so, suppose uh, if it's not hemoglobin but the other protein, suppose multiple subunit is there at that time, the main force that is responsible that is the hydrophobic interaction. Hydrophobic interaction. Interaction. So, what happened here? So, suppose the phenylalanine. Here it's leucine, here is isoleucine, here is valine. All the hydrophobic amino acids are exposed uh, to the interior of this molecule. And now they are forming some interaction and then now they are together. Whenever you will denature the protein, the hydrophobic bond will be disrupted. Okay. Suppose if you are giving SDS and, and with the SDS some other detergent or something, then the hydrophobic interaction will be disrupted. Okay. So suppose in case of hemoglobin, if there is 2 alpha, 2 beta, if you perform denaturing gel, denaturing gel, you will uh, able to see two distinct band. Why two band? Because one for alpha and one for beta. These two alpha will show one band. This two beta will show one band. Okay, that's all for today.